Hello again. In the previous video, we looked at the LJ chart and understood uh, how the principle of the Gaussian or normal distribution can be applied in the laboratory through the tool that we call LJ chart. And now when you uh, use a tool, you should know how to use it correctly. So the rules of how to use the, the LJ correctly has been described by James Westgard and these are called the Westgard rules. And these rules are used for detecting changes in the analytical system. Let us examine these rules one by one. And first of all, let us understand the rules for what. Westgard has formulated rules to decide whether an analytical run is in control or out of control. These rules can be applied as single rules or as a group which are now called the multi rules. And Westgard rules can be applied only if your QCs are plotted with a range of 3ST. That is one thing that I explained in the last video also. If your analytical system already has a QC module which is not plotting it in 3ST, you may need to look at other options of doing it outside of the analytical system if you want to apply the Westgard rules. If you are able to monitor your QC without Westgard rules, that is okay, but you have to understand the rules that you have to define and follow those rules just to stabilize your analytical system. And again to continue why the rules, there are two key factors that you need to keep in mind when you are applying the rules. One is to maximize error detection. The percentage of error detection which is generally depicted as PED should be more than 90 percent and minimize false rejection which is percentage false rejection which is de depicted as PFR should be less than 5 percent. Why do you have these rules? Because uh, errors have to be detected that is the concept of QC uh, and the, the better that you, your system detects error the better your reports are going to be. But then there is also financial consideration there. So, you would not want to just reject good runs just because you have a doubt. So, there should be minimum false rejection. So, these are the two concepts that you need to keep in mind while you are making your QC rules and interpreting your QC rules. And uh, while talking about QC rule nomenclatures, we have to understand two sets of nomenclatures, the N and L. And also another set of terms are within run or across run or within material or across material. I will talk about these in a little bit. So, one again N and L and also within and across run or material. And what is N and L? L. N, L can either be written like this or like this as a subscript or after a colon. N is the number of control measurements involved and we will come to that later and L is the limit exceeded. N stands for the number of control material involved. If there is only one control material, that is N is 1. If there are two control material violating the rule, the N is 2. And if there are three material violating, N is 3. So, that is how we talk about your N and L. And control no. Second kind of nomenclature we talked about is within run or across run. Across run and within material. Within run across material and across run within material. What is the meaning of these things? Suppose you have three levels of QC, you are talking about a hematology analyzer or a immunoassay analyzer where there are generally three levels of QC and you see on one day that all the levels of the QC are being violated. So, what would you call? This is just one run within one run. Maybe at 10 o'clock today morning, you had a QC run and you had three levels, all the three of which violated the some rule. So, this is what we you would call within run across material, material 1, material 2, material 3. There is only one run. On the contrary, across run within material when the same QC material will violate rule in two or more consecutive runs. So, the same example we are going to carry it here. Day 1, 2 and 3, you see level 1 is going out, level 1 is going out, level 1 is going out. The other levels are okay. So, we would call this a cross run and within material. So, these are the two rules, N and L rule, whether the, the number of controls and the limit exceeded well, uh, one kind of a nomenclature and the second is within run across material rule. We will see as we go through the next slides. So, rule violations, now we know two things. 
what happens in a stable analytical system, the Gaussian with the stable mean and stable ST and how rule violations are named. We know these two concepts. So, let us proceed with looking for specific rule violations and the possible reasons for their occurrence. And once again, we start with the Gaussian now on its side because now we are talking about LJs. And now we need to understand once again, what are these rules N, L? Now we are talking only about the L part of it, the limits exceeded. So, what, how are these names again applicable? If a QC data point lies between your mean and 1SD, there is no particular nomenclature there for mean and 1SD. But if it is going beyond 2SD, you call this the 2S region because it is going beyond 2SD. Therefore, you call that a 2S, which whatever data point goes beyond the 2SD region, you call that, that violation a 2S violation. And if it is going beyond the 3SD, you call it a 3S violation. It can be a minus 3S violation, minus 2S violation or plus 2S violation, plus 3S violation depends upon whether it is a positive direction or not negative direction. So, you call these specific names and you will understand more about this as we talk in the come to the next slide. So, just the regions of it. If whenever a QC run is falling, data point is falling beyond the 2SD, you call it a 2S violation and beyond the 3SD region, you call it the 3S violation. And now, let us look at this. There is a, this rule violation is called 1, 2S. This is the mean 1SD, 2SD. There is a data point which is going outside of the 2SD region in the positive direction. So, this is a plus 2S violation. And how, what is the significance of a plus 2 violation? Re, now, you recap the N and L. Here, the N is a number of vi, number violated. It is only 1 QC which is getting violated. So, this is 1 and L is the limit exceeded is 2. So, that is why this is called a 1, 2 S error. 1, 2 S or we already said it can be 1 is to 2 S or 1 subscript 2 S. 1 2 S or 1 2 S denotes a random error or the beginning of a systematic error because there is an error. We know for sure there is something going on, but then you also know that some we already if you look at the Gaussian here, we know that 5 percent of the runs that is 2.5 percent of the runs can normally come here. 2.5 here can normally happen. So, this could be a normal run, but it it can also be a abnormal run, it could be a faulty run. So, at this point you just know that yes, it has violated a rule and since there is a chance that it can also be a normal run, we do not take it as a rejected run. We still say the system, we have to watch the system, but at this point I am not rejecting my run. And what exactly do you mean by rejecting of a run? You wait till your QC is seen and passed before you run your samples. So, if you see that the QC is in this region 1 to S region, would you want to run your samples or would you want to say no, I am going to stay as take corrective actions before I go and do my sample analysis. No, if you have only a 1 to S, then you would continue with your analysis, but you will make note of the fact that there has been a 1 to S violation, but you do not make decisions solely depending on this violation. There are other rules that you have to keep in mind while you proceed. This is 1 to S violation. Let us look more at this. 1 to S can be in both in the plus or the minus direction. We already talked about it. Even in the absence of any analytical errors, 4.5 percent of the data points can be lying in the 1 to S region. We again talked about it and it may be considered a warning rule for a random or an emerging systematic error. It is only a warning. You need to now observe. That is all it means at this point. However, one thing is very important. If the laboratory is running only one level of QC, which a lot of labs do, they run only one level of QC, in which case 1, 2 S has to be a rejection rule. Because you do not know what the other QC would have done if that you had two levels of QC. It could have been some other rule violation. So, since you do not have a second QC level to monitor your analytical system with 1 to S has to be considered a rejection in case you have only one level of QC being run in your laboratory. So, what about the PFR and PED? 
what is a percentage false rejection and percentage error detection of 12s. So, 12 has, has got very good PED because anything which is going beyond 2s3 even when you know that 5 percent of your runs can be there in the 4.5 to 5 percent of your runs can be there in your uh, the 2sd region you still are rejecting so the error detection is fantastic however the pfr is not acceptable because you have got 4.7 percent of the runs rejected if one level of control is run because that is the number if you have got one level of control and normally that would be 4.7 percent of the runs could be going there one level if you have got two level double of that the, if you have got three levels of controls and then if any one level falling in uh, one two s region and you are rejecting you are rejecting a lot of good runs so pfr is unacceptable for one two s but as i said earlier if you are doing only one level of control and you have no mechanism of knowing what the other levels would have been if you were running it it has to be a rejection if the laboratory has a practice of running only one level of control which is not a good practice. Now we are coming to the next rule 1 3 s rule 1 3 s again is self evident one level of control is going beyond the 3 s d region 3 this is your 3 standard deviation so it is falling in the 1 3 s 1 3 s can be negative 1 3 s can be positive same as 1 2 s it can be negative or positive and one run which is 3s 1 above 3sd is 13s 13s or 13s same two different ways of writing it denotes a random error or the beginning of a large systematic error again we cannot say at this point with one run whether it is a random or a systematic error it could be at the beginning of a large systematic error but if you look at this particular data point which is falling next one since it is normal i would want to we would think this is a random error suppose the next one was also here that is a large systematic error that is developing but if you don't have these data points here you wouldn't know whether because at the point that you are running you are only running here this is these happened only later on so if you have only one run sitting here you wouldn't know whether it is systematic error or the uh, random error however it is it's a rejection 13 s has to be rejected because normally no data point should be going beyond the 3 sd region so 13 s is a rejection so it can be both it can be random or a large systematic error you have to watch and if you just ignore these these data points here and then assume these data points were all here that is a systematic error. Since the next points are all coming in the normal limit this is now a can say this is a random error and 1 3 s in the negative direction that is these are demarcating the standard deviation 1 second standard deviation third standard deviation and it is going beyond the third standard deviation and 1 3 s refers to when the data point falls outside this is a recap. A run is rejected when a single control measurement exceeds the mean in the plus or minus SD control limit. This rule identifies unacceptable random errors or the possibly the beginning of a large systematic error. This is just recap of what we already said and we will come to the next rule here. There are now two data points which are going outside the two SD limits. So, what would you call it? Two, the n here is two and n and l again is 2. So, you would want to call this rule a 2 2 s rule and so it is since it is the same material this is on day 1, this is on day 2, let us call it day 4 and day 5, day 4 and day 5 2 subsequent days this is a 2 2 s rule violation across runs within the same material across runs and similarly if the on the same day on day number 5 you have got two data points one from level 1 let us say assume this is level 1 and let us assume the blue is level 2. So, we have got two levels of controls running simultaneously and both the levels are going beyond the 2s region you would call it a 2 2s rule violation within run it is a single run on the same day at the same time and you have got two rule violations in both your levels. I hope you understand here 2 2 s rule violation across run okay within the same material this is a 2 2 s rule violation within run across two materials. So, 
this is the explanation here, 2 runs crossing 2 SD limits on the same side of the mean in 2 levels in the same run or 2 runs of the same material on 2 consecutive runs which is 2 to S and 2 to S is always indicative of a systematic error. You will not have multiple violations sequentially or within the run of two, two control materials simultaneously if there is no systematic error. So, 2 to S is indicative of a systematic error. This is again a recap of whatever we have heard in the last slide. Two consecutive QC results greater than 2S on the same side of the mean. This rule identifies systematic errors only. There are two applications to this rule. We already saw that within run, two levels of QC in the same run or across run in the same QC into consecutive runs. And what is the difference in understanding is whether it is across run or within run that we will see in a little bit. If a normal level 1 and abnormal level 2 control are more than the 2 or the same, this is recap on the same side of the mean, this is a 2 2 s violation of an indicator systematic error. If however, level 1 is acceptable, so that this is how you would know. Now, it, it was very easy to understand it on the diagrammatic representation, but in, in real time, how will you detect 2 2 s errors? This is what this slide is talking about. You, if both are violating, it is very evident and you know it has been violated. But if you see only 1 to S in one level uh, and then you do not know uh, how do you proceed. Do you just say, oh, this is only a warning, I am going to proceed or would you stop and look at the other QC level? That is what this is talking about. When you see any 1 to S error, you just do not proceed, oh this is only a warning, I will see you tomorrow, that is not an option. You have to look at the other level to see and the previous run of the same level. If my L1 is violating, as it says, my L1 is acceptable and L2, level 2 is 1 to S, level 2 result from the previous run must be examined because that could be a what? That could be an across run 2 to S. Unless you go back and examine, you would not know. Again, my L1 is violating, you have to look at your L2. Some of the analyzers uh, have built in mechanisms to warn 2 to errors because if one level is violating, the machine itself will, the QC module and the software will detect the 2 to S and tell you it is a 2 to S across or 2 to S within. But sometimes, most equipment that I have seen, they do not do that. You have to look at it and understand it, and this is one rule that you are frontline workers should be enabled to understand that if you see 1 to S in a thing, please look at uh, the previous days run in the same material and also look at the same days run in the other material. That is the only way that you can detect a 2 to S that putting the two LJs together and the two runs together and then, then comparing. So, this is a very important thing and if level 2 in the previous run was plus 2 or greater than across run application for systematic error is violated. So, I hope that you understand that. And now again, violation of the within run application indicates that the systematic error is present and that it affects potentially the entire analytical curve. The 2 to S, both levels of QCs are getting violated on the same day that 2 to S says that your analytical system is possibly having a problem at different levels. But if the violation is occurring across run, that is only one level of QZ is getting errors, uh, that indicates that only a single portion of the analytical curve is affected by the error and the corresponding clinical decision level. We want to look at this diagram once again. What does this say? This is what I am talking about. There are two violations, but at the same level. So, this says this is only one level of your analytical curve that is affected. Suppose you have a 2 to S error in a course in the across runs, the level is 200, your suppose your control mean is 200. So, it is at that point it is violated. You are looking at the same 2 to S error, but there are both the levels are violated. Suppose your L1 mean is uh, 100 and L2 mean is 200. That means your analytical curve has a problem at both the levels. So, clinical decision levels, both levels you have to be careful. Whereas here, you are okay about one clinical decision level, whereas other clinical decision level is what is getting affected. This kind of a rule applies in all the uh, rules where you are looking at consecutive runs and we will talk about it in our slides that are coming up. So, we talked about 2 to S, how do you identify 2 to S is and what are the corrective action that you have to do. Every 2 to S warrants corrective action because it is a systematic error and the corrective action has to be done. And we come to the next rule is 2 of 3 S and across runs 
and it is only seen across runs and two of three years is when you have two rule violations with one normal run in between because here you would want to assume that there is a problem in the systematic problem though there randomly one run happened to come back to the normal thing. There is a need for a caution there. You cannot dismiss that oh I had an 1 2 s yesterday uh, this is a and then I, I had a normal run uh, today tomorrow it is again going back to uh, 2 2 s. So, it is it, you cannot dismiss it like that. This indicates that there is some error in the analytical system because it is going back to 1 2 s far too often. So, every too many 1 2 s's though there are normal runs in between you cannot be dismissive about it. You need to look at the analytical system and it is ideal to take corrective actions here. Though in the NABL list of rules 2 of 3 s is not mentioned, uh, but it for the safety of your patients it is good to take note of 2 of 3 s also. And 2 of 3 s as I said no it is a systematic error because you what you are saying is that your rules are getting violated too frequently. Though there are normal runs which are happening in between you would want to understand why this is happening. And the next rule is R4S this is a very important rule and what R4S is when you have a 4 standard deviation difference between your two materials and this is only uh, within uh, runs that R4S is applicable because it is a random error rule because you have got too much of random variation one level is going in one direction the other level is going in another direction and uh, this is one thing everyone who is using only one level of control should understand. If you have a only one level of control you will never be able to detect an R4S because R4 is, is applicable only within runs where for which you will should have more than one control material and two levels of control material with four standard deviation difference between the two data points that is R4S and it always denotes a random error. So, this is a very pretty it is a clear rule and it is very easy to detect because you see and again very important if your analytical system does not automatically tell you these things it is important that your frontline worker is enabled to understand this that frontline worker should be told that this is an important rule violation and you, whenever you see rule violation of this sort you have to stop and take corrective actions before you proceed with your testing. And the R4S when two levels of recap of R4S when two control measurements in the group exceeds the mean plus or minus 2 SD on either side of this uh, or of the sum of the SDs of the two material is more than 4 SD. I will say that we will show that in a minute. This rule should only be interpreted within run and not across run. And this rule identifies random error only and is applied only within the current run. And example of an R4S assume both level 1 and level 2 have been essayed within the current run. The level 1 is 2.8 s above the mean and the level 2 is minus 1.3 s below the mean and if you add up you will see 4.1. 2.8 plus 1.3 it will be 4.1 standard deviations. So, even if your one level is going maybe this one is not violating a 2 2 s thing you cannot say oh, one it is not beyond the 2 sd on either side one is within the 2 sd that is not a valid uh, reason why you should not consider it as a R4s because actually R4s just means there is 4 s violation difference between the two runs. So, you need to actually see where your uh, locations of your data points are one level is one. 2.8 it is almost going up to the 3 SD region and one level you may say oh it is actually this is a 1 2 S no it is not a 1 2 S it is a, it becomes an R 4 S because the other level you need to actually look at the locations and decide whether it is a bigger error. So, you will immediately understand it is a random error that is the difference. So, if you consider this as a 1 3 S because if you put it on a chart you will see this is not going beyond 3 S it is only 2 S. So, it is a 1 2 S and this you will say this is not no that is not how you interpret it. You have to add up the numbers and see what is the total difference and if it is far too wide you have to think of some random error that has entered your analytical system. I hope that point is clear. It is not a clearly that it has to be above 2 here and below 2 here. It is far above 2 on one side and little not that below 2 on the other side it still counts as an R4S and it is always 
applicable within runs. And it since it is an indicator of an of a random error, it is it should be taken note of, and some remedial action should be done there. In the above example, though the level two has not violated a minus two SD level, together within the QC violator violates an R4S. I have already explained that. And we come to the next rule, which is a three one S rule and across. And this is a 3 one is rule within. And at this point, I would like to tell you that uh, NABL does not take this as a rule violation, but it is good to understand because this, these all these rules that I am going to talk about from now on may not be directly applicable if you are looking for accreditation, but it is not that is not the only reason why you would want to know how to run your QCs. You would want to really understand your analytical systems problems. So, these rules also should be understood. So, 3 1 is can be again be across or 3 1 is can be within the same material. If you have got 3 control material, tri levels of QC, I have already said hematology, immunoassays, many of these controls are multiple levels of QCs and 3 1 is always is a systematic error and 3 1 s can again be within or across runs we saw those pictures 3 consecutive measures exceed the same plus 1 s or minus 1 s in the control chart. So, you, if you look at this picture once where are these runs sitting are they going beyond any second standard deviation no these are in the one standard deviation region this is your mean one standard and this is your two standard deviation. So, it is not going beyond the two standard deviation it is still in, in your which region would that be it would be in your that 95 percent total data point region that is where your three runs are happening three runs are falling in that area where your 13.5 uh, percent do you remember the Gaussian uh, distribution the 68 95 90, 99 rule. So, if it is in that 95 percent place that 13.5 on one side and 13.5 on the other side. So, three runs are falling and that is kind of of a concern because that is not how you, you expect your data points to fall because that is not where that clustering should be happening. Three runs in that region where th there should be 13.5 percent runs only and out of your maybe your 10 or, or so runs here three are coming that is nearly 30 percent or maybe more if there are how many runs are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 there are 10 runs ten, 3 on 10 is like 30 percent of the runs and you do not expect that 30 percent of the runs to happen there you only expect 13 percent to happen there. So, you would want to take a note of this thing and see oh there is a 3 1 is happening there. Similarly, the 3 1 is within this one also is of concern to see that there are too many runs falling in that region. So, you may want to make a note of that. So, 3 1 is again. So, these are within control material across run control material we already talked about it and the same rule applies within control material violations indicate systematic bias in the single area of the analytical curve and in across material application indicates systematic error over a broader concentration of the analyte. So, we talked about this in um, 2 2 s. So, I will not go back into it whenever you are doing multiple controls when all the controls are violating the rule you would think at the broad concentration of the, the entire curve is possibly affected, but one level is violating it multiple times that means maybe only one level of that curve is affected that goes for without saying in all the rule violations. So, after 3 1 s we have 4 1 s the same thing within the 1 s region you have got 4 runs coming same if you have got a bi level control two points each on the same level will count as a 4 1 s the same concern only 13.5 percent of the runs are supposed to be sitting there, but you have got nearly 40 percent in there which is of a concern and you would want to make note of that and this again is a systematic error. Recap of the thing when four consecutive control measurements exceed the same uh, mean plus 1 or the same minus 1 control limit again 2 analytes versus 1 analyte. There are two applications of 3 1 s and 4 1 s again within control and within uh, run and across rules. I am not going into the details because we have already talked about it. If you want to dwell on that please go back and freeze the slide and look at it. And now you are coming to the next major rule which is a 10 x rule violation. 10 is not why you have to see why this is not x why not s and an s you say this is an 10 x rule because it really does not matter where your data point falls it is on one side of your mean that is all it means 10 runs falling on one side of your mean 
you were again concerned because that is though it is coming in this is too, too graphic a picture your 10x points can be anywhere on the one side it need not all line up like a train that like this picture is showing it can be any one anything on the one side what would the 10x indicate 10x is indicate far too many things are shifting to one side too many data points it's a systematic that's a bias building up so 10x should warn you to the towards the rule though the here the 10x the 10th point is been shown as red anything that is falling on the one side over a longer period of time is of a concern you can start at a earlier point also you can start at 6 also 6 is also recommended so anything that is happening and don't look ex expect it to be so theatrical dramatic as this they are all sitting on one side it could be anywhere similarly the same thing across runs you have got 5 runs coming and they are here so it is a 10x violation if you just go back and look at it if this is your mean and just at the mean you have got all these runs clustering so there are 10 points which are falling over on the one side of the mean and that is a reason for concern because mean is shifting understand that these are all diagrammatic explanations and uh, actually on your uh, monitor you may not see this in such a dramatic way and you need to st pick it up by looking at it closely and uh, there are these systematic error rules there are 6x 8x 9x 10x 12x there are all these multiple rules that you can apply depending on the performance of your analytes. So, you might wonder why are these things, why are so randomly, why are you saying 6x, 8x, 9x, 10x? So, what, what is the reason? So, the reason here is when you talk about multi rules and we have to now dwell much into the QC um, protocols to understand why all these rules are important. Say you have got your calcium and your performance of calcium is very poor and how do you understand the performance of calcium is very poor because you have got you have seen your LJ graph you have put other thoughts into it like your uh, maybe total error concepts bias is there there are multiple problems happening with your analyte in this case I am just taking the calcium as an example and so you might want to monitor that calcium very closely. So, maybe 10x is too late to, to understand why you do not want to wait for 10 days to see whether there is a rule violation you might want to wait for maybe 6 days to see whether there is a rule violation or 6 runs or you may want to one do the 6 runs in a faster way and to see whether there, is, there are rule violations. So, these are all part of the multi rules we will talk about multi rules in a later video. So, to understand what rules to apply in what case is again the decision that the laboratory has to take depending upon the performance of the analyte. In stable analytes none of these things may even be required. Unstable analytes is when you want to talk about these rules. So, we talked about 6, 8, 9, 10 and 12 x. The rules are the same as in the other parameters whether it is across runs or within runs. Want to look at these in detail please do that I am ca carrying on with the next rule. The next rule that we know we need to talk about is a 70 rule. 70 rule is a trend rule and you are seeing the points are coming down it is crossing the mean and it is coming to the other side it is a trend. So, we will talk about trends and shifts later on 70 is sh shows a trend and you might want to you will immediately know that this is there is something which is happening to the analytical system and points are all slipping in either towards a lower direction or whatever rule that I have shown whatever diagram I have I am just showing it in one direction other direction is also equally applicable that when the um, points are slipping or going up in a certain direction that means there is a trend in the analytical system which needs to be understood and uh, taken care of. 70 is uh, evidently obviously it is a systematic error and when 7 control measurements trend in the same direction crossing the mean either getting progressively higher or progressively lo lower that we call it a 70 rule and it is only applicable across runs. Uh, but then if you have 2 materials doing the same thing same kind of slipping down or going up evidently you would want to but technically as per the theory it is applicable only in the across runs. But whenever one level is trending upward or downward for 5 or 6 times other level doing the same thing it should be investigated it does not say in the guideline but it has to be investigated. So, the rule violations what are the rules that we talked about 12s, 22s, 13s, then 31s, 41s, 
uh, then it talked about the the all those 10x rules 6x 8x uh, 9x 10x 12x 70 and there are these all these rules that we have r4s we talked about all these rules and so we'll see the, now why do you even concern yourself with all these rules you know it's not just pointless there is there's a reason why you're concerning yourself with the rules because we said it earlier on in our discussion the lj charts are enabling you to understand the problem the, you understand there is a rule getting violated rule violation reflects something the rule violation reflects either there is a systematic error or a random error and the reasons for the systematic error are very different from those of the random error so it enables you to understand which part of the analytical system you may want to look at so if you are looking at all the looking at 1 2 s and we said if there it's a systematic error or it's a random error we said it can be either or 2 2 s is always a systematic error 1 3 s is either a systematic error or the beginning of either a large systematic error or a random error I explained it while we were on that picture. If you want to go back to it, please do. You will understand. If you have got a large systematic error starting, that also can start as a 1, 3 s. 4, 1 s, systematic. 2 of 3 s, systematic. 3, 1 s, systematic. 10 x, systematic. 70, systematic. R 4 s is only for random errors. So, the one rule that enables you to detect random errors is R4S, the one single rule. Therefore, it is important that you do that R4S correctly and if you remember what we said earlier, just do not look for both your uh, QCs to go up and down above the 2S uh, in the, the 2S region. Even if the total adds up to 4, four standard deviation difference, that still is a valid violation of R4S and that should be considered because that is indicating some randomness in your system. And within run errors and why do you want to look at the within run errors and why do you have to look at the across run errors? Within run alerts you to the what is going on immediately you don't have to wait for it to me you don't have to lo look for a wait for a uh, large amount of period to detect the error so if there are multiple levels of qcs uh, available with you that is a great advantage if you see a 13s that will happen regardless even if you have one qc level and it's going 13s you have to stop and take corrective action and if you have only one level of qc even 12s has to be considered as a rejection rule and if there is a 2 2 s violation again you have to stop and take corrective action your technicians have to be the your worker whoever is handling the machine aware of these rules at least 1 3 s and 2 2 s 1 2 s these are the rules they should be made to be aware of r 4 s and if it is a um, r 4 s 2 2 s 1 1 3 s 1 2 s these are the four rules your frontline worker, your, your uh, the, the person who is running the QC and running the sample even unsupervised by the supervisory staff, that person should be aware of these rules, four rules, 1-2-S, 1-3-S, 2-2-S, R-4-S. Minimum these, fr the, the frontline worker should be enabled to understand, interpret and take corrective actions for these four rules. Because N must be at least two to satisfy clear QC requirements, all these rules can be applied within a run. If you do not have the second level QC, you are limited, you cannot understand this, you cannot understand this. You can only see this and possibly 1 to S, which you may even ignore. The importance of having at least two levels of QC in the laboratory and I hope these, uh, less, these uh, videos will enable you to make a decision on how you would want to go ahead with your QC planning. And across run er errors are all 2 to S, 3 1 S, 4 1 S, 6, 8, 9 and 10 X, 70, all th these are all systematic errors and they can all be seen only uh, with across runs. and and across materials. So, it is very important that uh, technical supervisory staff make a periodic review plan for your QC charts. So, even if the uh, technician does not understand the, the rules for your periodic review, that is ok, but the, the initial four rules that we talked about should be understood by the technician. And the single rules and multi rules, we will I said we will talk about it later, how to use these rules in your quality control planning, we will discuss it in later videos. So, once again just to go back to the thing, your QC helps you to monitor your analytical system, analytical system this is a picture that 
I may have to use many times over your analytical system has got far too many components and it is potentially unstable anything can go wrong your machine can go wrong operator can change reagents can change calibrators can change fridge uh, stability can change but then if you have got a stable analytical system and if you know the rules you are making an LJ graph so these are now the caveats to whatever we are saying you have got good control materials you know what the principles of controls are you are making your LJ you know your rules and you are monitoring your LJ all these things together is what will enable you to monitor your analytical systems thank you